Hello everyone. This is Coder2J. In this video, I will show you how to build a Dagster job and schedule it to run periodically. Sounds excited? Let's get started. In the last video, we have built this simple asset graph. And you'll notice a button labeled Reload Definitions in the top right corner. But what exactly is a definition? In Dagster, the definition serves as the foundational abstraction for essential concepts such as assets, jobs, and schedules. Each of these elements falls under the umbrella of a definition. In the code location of hellodagster.py file, we have defined three asset definitions, therefore it loads all by default. In fact, we can create a definition instance to tell Dagster which definitions shall be included in the web interface. Let's go back to the VS code to achieve that. Here, we need to import the definitions module first. Then we can create a definitions instance named DFS. With this, we can decide on a set of various definitions explicitly available and loadable by Dagster tools, such as assets, schedules, sensors, jobs, etc. Let's define what assets shall be included. It accepts an iterable of assets definition. We can pass a list of asset definitions such as my underscore first underscore asset and my underscore second underscore asset. Save the Python file, then go back to the browser to reload. Now we can only see the first and second asset that shows up. The third asset disappears, although we have defined it since we didn't include it in our definitions instance. Next, let's define a job. This requires setting a value for the jobs parameter, which accepts an iterable of job definition. In this case, we want to create a job that includes our asset graph. Dagster provides a convenient function, define underscore asset underscore job, to create a job definition from assets. Let's import it first. In the list, we use the define underscore asset underscore job function to create our job. We can assign a suitable name to our job, such as hello underscore Dagster underscore job. Then, we can pass a list of assets that we want to include in the job to the selection parameter. Let's include all three assets. After saving the Python file, return to the browser and reload the definitions. Oops. An error occurs, stating that my underscore third underscore asset was selected, but no assets definition objects supply these keys. This means we want to include my underscore third underscore asset in the job, which is not available as we only included the first two assets in the assets parameter. Let's include my underscore third underscore asset. Then, return to the browser and reload the definitions again. Now it loads successfully. We can see in the code location hellodagster.py, we have an asset group called get underscore started and our newly created job hello underscore dagster underscore job. If we click on that, we can see the job consists of the list of assets we provided. Can we create a job with a subset of the asset graph? Absolutely. Let's return to VS Code. Suppose we only want to include my underscore first underscore asset and my underscore second underscore asset. We can simply remove my underscore third underscore asset from the selection. Now, if we return to the browser and reload the definitions, we can see that our job includes only two assets, and all three assets are present in the asset group. If we materialize our job, it will trigger a materialization run for each asset in this job definition. In this case, the first and second assets. The third asset will not be materialized. In addition to manually adding assets to the selection parameter, Dagster also provides a module called Asset Selection for Dynamic Asset Selection. Let's import it first. This module offers various ways to select assets. For example, we can include all assets by calling its all function, or select all assets with a certain key prefix using the key underscore prefixes function. There are many other ways, but I won't cover them all here. One method worth mentioning is the group function which allows us to select all materializable assets in a specific asset group by providing the asset group name. For instance, if we want to include all assets in the get underscore started asset group, 
We just need to pass the asset group name to it. After saving the Python file, return to the browser and reload the definition. Now, you should see that the job includes all three assets in our get underscore started asset group. Now that we have defined our job, we can manually trigger a job run with the materialize all button and then view the job run history in the run section. But what if we want our job to run periodically and automatically? Fortunately, Dagster provides another definition called schedule that allows us to easily schedule periodic runs for our jobs. Let's return to VS Code to set this up. To add a schedule to our job, we need to set a value for the schedule's parameter in the definitions, which accepts an iterable of schedule definition. Let's import schedule definition first. In the list, we can create a schedule definition instance by giving our schedule a suitable name, such as hello dagster schedule. Then we can select which job to schedule by providing the job name. In this case, it's our hello dagster job. Next, we need to set a schedule to determine how often our job run should be triggered. This is done using the cron schedule parameter. For example, we can use a daily, an hourly, or a weekly to set it up accordingly. If you want a more sophisticated schedule, there's a helpful website called crontab.guru. It provides a visual way to create cron schedule expressions. We can see clear instructions on what each symbol it accepts means. Then we can modify the cron expression, and it will show when and how often a job will be triggered. For example, a schedule of every five minutes can simply be created by adding a step value of five. We can see the schedule will start every five minutes from now. Let's remove the step value, then we get a schedule of every minute. Copy this expression, then we can return to VS Code to paste it as a value for our cron schedule parameter. After saving the Python file, return to the browser and reload the definitions. We'll notice a clock icon added to our job. At the top, we can see our schedule is set to every minute. Click on it for more details. We can also view all the schedules by clicking the overview button. Under schedules, we'll see all the schedules we defined, such as our hello dagster schedule. Click on that to view the metadata about our schedules, such as the job schedule and execution time zone. Below that, you'll find the tick history and run history, which lists all the ticks and runs from this schedule. At the top, there's a toggle button for turning our schedule on or off. By default, it's turned off. Let's turn it on by toggling it. On the right, we'll see date information about the next tick in UTC. If we hover our mouse over the clock icon, we can see the next tick date in our local time zone. Also, we'll notice the clock icon next to our job turns green. Let's wait a minute for our first scheduled job to be triggered. Now you can see our first job tick in the tick history. Click on it to view some metadata about the run request. We can also see the run ID and a view run button for easily checking the job run details. In addition to that, we can see all our job runs under the run history. Clicking the run ID will give us a holistic view of the events and logs that occurred during our scheduled job run. That's it. You've learned how to build a Dagster job and schedule it to run periodically. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to see covered in the next video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.